So basically when the GTX 1650 launched, it didn't exactly receive that much positive press. And that was basically because it was slightly more expensive than that of an RX 570, but also performed worse. So it didn't actually really make much sense in that regard. However, there was one thing that kept this card in relatively good graces to the budget community. Basically, at the moment, there's a bit of a meta going around where you buy an old OEM PC from Dell or HP or what have you, and then they use basically a half slot size PCIe slot, and then you grab something like the GTX 1650, namely a half slot size solution of it, and then you stick it into that PC, and voila, you have a budget gaming PC for cheaper than that of buying the individual components, because usually the OEM boards and things that go along with that are cheaper than regular off-the-shelf components. And so the GTX 1650 basically worked really well for those provided you could get a half slot size solution for it. But then the GTX 1650 Super launched and then the 1650 seemed like it wasn't actually really that great of a buy at all. So from that you might gather that the GTX 1650 non-super is really only useful in some cases. Other than the fact that if you can get a 1650 for cheaper than that of an RX 570 and cheaper than that of an GTX 1650 super, it might actually be not too bad of a deal. However, if you're upgrading from that of a GTX 1050 Ti or even a 750 Ti, I would actually say just skip out on the 1650 entirely and just go for either the Super variant or wait for the new budget cards to release because frankly the 1650 non-Super isn't all that much better than a 1050 Ti. But if you need something new there's also the GTX 1060 or even the RX 580 that you can get used for pretty much the same price as a brand new GTX 1650. Now I completely get it if you don't want to buy a used graphics card, it might fail, it doesn't have warranty, etc, etc. But there is also still some really good value to be had in the used market.